Espanha. Good day, everyone, and welcome to what, welcome to today's class. My name is Yada Abdulashir, and we are going to continue from what from where we stopped in the what in the previous class. So, if, if you can remember during the what during the first class, we were able to talk about what what is the meaning of what what is the meaning of business. We were able to talk about different classification of business. We were able to talk about some what on. Um, advantage of what different forms of business organization we talk about the world the sole proprietorship business the partnership business and the world and the corporation as well then we also talk about what stakeholders and globalization of the things so the first thing that we have to do when we are talking about in management or in business is you have to try as much as possible to know the different forms of organization that you like to what that you like to establish so if you are trying to what establish a sole proprietorship, you are trying to establish a partnership or the what the corporation as well. So once you have that, what once you have that at the back of your mind, then the next thing after we what after we are planning to establish a what a business is to think about what is to think about the business what the business environment, because the business what uh, organization does not operate in what in isolation. You you have to what organization operate within the what within the environment. Your what the input that you use in carrying out your what your operation is from the environment that you what get some of get them, and what your output as well you also send it back to the what you also send it back to the environment as well. So one of the most important thing as in what you are, when you are what when you are forming your company is to try as much as possible to look for a what for a good location. And if you remember during the what the previous class as well we talk about what uh, corporate failure. That is why would why did organization fail? Organization can fail sometime as a result of what? As a result of location. Location can make organization to fail. So it is very, very important once you have a good mission statement, you have what you have a good vision, you know where you are, what the reason. When we say a mission, mission is the reason for existence of that organization. Your vision is your what is your future aspiration. Oh, in this also, yes, in this year, I want to be this, I want to be that. You have your goals and objectives. So once you have your mission, you have your vision, your goals and objectives, the next thing that you have to do properly is you have to have your what? You have to uh, understand your business environment. So business environment is very, very what? It is very, very important. So let's start with what? We're starting with the business environment today. And what do we mean by what? What do we mean by business environment? We say that what organization does not operate in vacuum. Generally, a business operates into a world, in a what in multifactored environment, and sometimes you know we call it what the topic is what uh, environmental analysis, business environment. There are sometimes in some texts in management we refer this particular topic that we are talking about today as what we call what situation what analysis. So if you do not call it environmental analysis, sometimes we call it what situation analysis. Why? In terms of what environment also change. Environment is what is dynamic. So organization does not operate in what in vacuum. You operate in the what's very you operate in the dynamic environment most time. So the environment itself is a subject to a lot of what a lot of changes. There's a lot of forces in the environment. The relationship between the business and its environment is one of the what the mutuality that is environmental what experts pressured on the world business while the business in turn influence some aspect of the world of the environment as well so the environment influence you and business organization you also what you also influence uh, some aspect in the world in the environment as well so what do we mean by what what do we mean by business environment what do we mean by business you know these are two what now we have a business and we also have what environment at least from our from our generic knowledge, and every one of us at least <laughs> we can able to avoid, we know what is, uh, what's the meaning of what what's the meaning of environment. So when we now had business to it, you no, know, that's a word, that's it uh, two centers on this one now. Business environment can be defined as a set of factors or conditions that are external to the fame to the business, but who have what, but which have been uh, influenced on the operation of the business enterprise. Look at the word, look at the, uh, the, what we call, look at the definition of business environment. We say business environment are what? Are factors or conditions that are external to the business. 
So, and let me tell you something, in business environment, business environment is divided into two. In terms of what we, let's say, we have two types of what business environment. There's what we call internal environment, and we also have what we call what internal or external environment. Internal environment and what an external environment. But our focus, our focus here is about the what is about the external environment, because organization does not have control over is what external what external environment. You can only what you can only react to it so that you not achieve what we call what strategic drift. So a strategic drift is a situation whereby there's a world, there's a lot of changes in the world, in the business environment, and the business does not what the business does not react to it. So for you not to ask, uh, for you not to, uh, for you not to be in a situation of what strategic drift, then you have to pay a special attention to your world. You have to pay a special attention to your world, to your environment. It is very, very what, well. it is very, very important. So we say what business environment is a world is a set of factors or conditions that are what that are external to the world to the business, but which are what which have influence. Most of these factors that we'll be talking about, factors of words, factors that affect business environment, majority of the one that we'll be talking about is to be about what external, what external forces. So these are what, these are external factors, these are conditions, but they have what, they have influence on the what, on the organization. By external, we mean that those factors or forces are not usually in what, they are not usually within the control of the business. They are not usually within the world. They are not usually within the control of the world of the business. So if things are not within your world, within your control, those are what those are external what those are external factors. So what do we mean by business environment? Business environment can be defined as a set of what as a set of factors or conditions that are what that are external to the world to the business. But we have what they are external to us, but they have influence on the what the operation of the business what the business enterprise. What are the what, what are the important of what business environment? Because why are we saying it? Why, why is business or why do we need to pay a special what? Why do we need to pay a special attention to what business or to our business environment, to the environment in which we are situated? Why? Why? Business depends on the world, on the environment for its supply. For its supply is what of its input, and at the same time, absorb its word, absorb its output. Like I said earlier, the business does not operate in vacuum. Business does not operate in isolation. You relate with the environment. And how do you relate in the environment to get the input? When you what? You take it to your factory, the raw material, you take it to the factory, you convert it to a finished good. You also send it back to the world, to the environment. Part. You send it back to the environment to absorb your, uh, your output. So you can see it is very, very important because you can't deal with that world. You can't deal with that business environment. The following are therefore the importance of what business environment. What is business environment? Why are we talking about why is it so important? Because if you remember from the world from the previous class, one of the reasons why a business will work, one of the reasons why a business will fail is as a result of your environment can make you to fail as well. It's not because of the world, it's not because of your internal process, the way you are doing in the organization. That's why you are uh, uh, corporate failure, that's why the company fail. Your business environment can also make you to work, can also make the business organization to fail. So it is very, very important. So you can see how important it is. So even though I'm doing very well within my organization, but if the internal environment is not good, then the business will fail as well. The following are therefore the important of what business environment one. And in the environment, there's a lot of what there's a lot of opportunity. There's a lot of what there's a lot of opportunity that you can derive from your work, from your business environment. So, and once you have opportunity, there's also what? There's also trend. Once you have what? Once you have opportunity, there's also what? There's also a trend to it. So it is from the what? It is from the environment that you see a lot of opportunity. And once there's opportunity, there's also what? There's also a trend to it. So you have to do a, what? a proper analysis of it so that you're able to mitigate, so that you're able to what? mitigate some of the what? some of the trends and absorb a lot of what? and absorb a lot of uh, opportunity from the environment. Another important of business environment is that you give what? It's give directional clarity. 
it's give directional clarity in terms of what the interaction will lead to opening up a new a new frontier for world for growth and sustainability of the business it give us direction so once you understand your business environment very well it will give you direction that oh if you want to go to this if you want to grow these are some of the things that you need to pay attention to if you want your world your business organization to be very very good so that it will have a what a good reputation with the public. These are some of the things that you need to do. So for you to succeed, because you cannot succeed without what without your environment. For you to succeed, you have to pay your what you have to pay a special attention to your what your environment. So once you do some what environmental analysis, it will give you direction that oh, if you want to, and every organization wants to be successful. So once you pay attention to your world, to your environment, you're able to understand their need. That, oh, in this environment now, what, what, what do they need? Which type of product that, oh, if I send this product to them, they will like it. Is the world, is the environment. You need to relate with the environment so that you're able to get some of this, or you're able to get some of this information. And once you get this information, it will give you direction. And another word, another one is that it serve as a word, it serve as a continual word, it serve as a continued learning process. It serve as a word, continuous learning process in terms of what environment is what environment is dynamic. Environment is what is dynamic. So it serve as a word, it serve as a continued learning process. It's just like a word, it's just like a risk. You can only minimize what you can only minimize risk. You can eliminate what you can eliminate risk. So it serves as a word, it serves as a continual process because your environment is not constant, it changes. So these are you doing what in last year, then by this year, the environment could have what? The environment could have changed. So if your environment changed as a manager, you also learn from what you also learn from it, and you're able to what you're able to react to the what to the changes. So it serves as a word, it serves as a continuous word, it serves as a continual learning process for managers, because as a manager now in a certain branch, okay, these are you carry out your operation last year, but as of this year now, the business environment could have changed. So as a result of that, it will serve as a continual learning process for you so that you're able to learn that, oh, I'm what, I'm using manual before, but there's a lot of changes in the environment. There's a lot of changes in the environment now. So we are not going to use manual again. We are going to be using a what, a computerized system. So, but you use manual last year and you are successful. But if this year there's a lot of changes in what in technology, then you yourself, you, all, you also need to bring up a new method of doing your work, of doing your work. So it serves as a continual learning process for what for manager because it is not what it is not a one-way direction. Your business environment is not a one-way direction. So another important of what uh, of business environment is that what. Image building, image what? Building business interaction within the environment, help the business organization to improve their image by socially what? By being socially responsible. And don't worry, very soon we are going to be talking about what? Corporate social responsibility. So these are some of the things that manager, you also need to pay attention to. If you, if you look about your business environment and you look at, oh, in this particular environment, there's a lot of what? Uh, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of um, challenges that they, uh, they are facing. You can help them. Oh, in this particular environment, there's no, uh, there's no a proper network. In this particular uh, environment, there's no a what? There's no a proper um, water. So you can what? You can provide a what? You can provide water for them. And if you are providing water, oh, in this particular environment, there's no transformer. In this particular community, they didn't have a transformer. They didn't have a good water to drink. There's no good of all, there's no good, uh, there's no good road. You can do it for them. And if you are doing this, it will enhance your world, your business world. It will enhance the image of your world, of your business. And if your world, your business image is enhanced with the world, with that particular community, they will also buy your product. They will also protect your world, your business from external forces because you are also what you are socially responsible. You are also taking care of them. So let's say, for example, now in this particular community, now there's no water, there's no, uh, there's no bowl. You don't have a good water, and you provide it for them. They don't have a good electricity. There's no a good trans uh, transformer, and you what? You procure some transformer for them. So you can see now. So would that particular people in that community are they going to hate you? 
Are they going to hate what you are doing? No, they will surely like it because you are also protecting their interests. So if you are protecting the interests of the world, of the citizen in that particular environment, it's as if you are also, or indirectly, you are also protecting your world. You are also protecting your business image as well. And if a business organization have a world, have a good public image, that's another one. That's one, uh, that's one, uh, that's one of the indicators for growth. That's one of the indicators for growth. That is, if you, if you have a good public image, they will patronize your work, they will buy your goods, they will patronize your service. And if they are doing that, you know, you also get some work, some revenue uh, from such as well. And another one is what identification of what strength and what and weakness. Business environment help to identify strength and weakness of the business organization for immediately response of the management. It help us to what it help us to identify the what the strength and the weakness in our business environment. It's help us to identify what. Please don't forget what what is the importance of business environment. It help us to identify our strength and weakness. It help us to identify opportunity and trend. It give direction. It serve as a continual learning process. It what it enhance pop uh, business image. So it's happy to identify your strength. That oh, this is what I'm good at, and it will also tell you what if you if, uh, business environment also make you to understand some of your what some of your weakness things that you're not really doing very well that your competitors is what is doing very well. So your environment can also uh, can also give that you know, can also give you that direction in relation to your what your strength and what and weakness. Yeah. What what is business environment? Business environment is, is what is a set of factors. What is business environment? Business environment is a what is a set of factors in which are what which are external to the what to the business, but which influence what the business organization. You can see the definition now. Business environment can be defined as a what as a set of factors or conditions that are external to the business, but you have influence. But which have what influence? They are external to us, but they have influence on the what on the operation of the what of the business enterprise. What are the important? The time in the world, opportunity and trend, give direction, serve as a continued learning process. Uh, image what? Image building, identification of strength and what? And weakness. So we have what? We have uh, different what? We have different uh, environment. We have different type of business environment. We have different type of business environment. So we have what we call what? And you can see here, we have what we call pestel. We have what we call what? Pestel. So the P stands for what? Political environment. Please don't forget. The P stands for what? Political environment. The E stands for what? Economic what? Environment. The X stands for what? Social what? Social environment. The T stands for what? Technology. The E is for what? Ecology. And the hell is the what? Is legal. Please don't forget this. This is the acronym of what? We call it what? PESTEL. These are the what these are uh, business on uh, these are the type of what these are the type of business environment. We have political environment, we have economic environment, we have social environment, we have technology environment, and we have what ecology. That is the E ecology, what ecology, and we also have the what we also have the lega. The P stand for what I come again is for political. The E is what economy. The X is what social. T is for what technology. T is for technology. E is what ecology. E is what ecology, and L is what lega. P is what political. E is what economy. The X is what social. The T is what technology, ecology, and what and lega. So the, we use the acronym called what pestel, and is a what is a model that we can also use to analyze our what our business environment. Is a model that we also use to analyze our business environment. So, what are the some of the what? What are the some of the factors? What are the some of the indicators that are made up of this different uh, type of business environment? So, what are the indicators of what political world? What are the indicators of what political environment? And as we are moving on in the what in the next stage of this, uh, uh, we also have another course which is the continuation of what, which is a continuation of this. We call it what. Uh, Corporate strategic management, corporate strategic what? Corporate strategic management, and it is we usually talk about business environment as well. But at that stage, you can be giving what you can be giving a certain scenario, and we are going to ask you to use this particular model to analyze it. We call it what pestel. We also have another one. We also have another model that we can use to analyze business environment. We can use what SWOT analysis. We can use what Porter what. We can use what Porter Diamond. We can use what Porter Firefox as well to analyze business what to analyze business environment. Okay. 
So, but here there's nothing what there's nothing like that. Okay. So it's what is step by step. Okay. So what are the factors uh, that made up of what what are the factors that made up of political environment or sometimes we call it what indicators of what political what environment. So we have what's government, what we have government policy. It is indicators of whether in that particular economy we are going to have a, what a good political environment or not. We also have what political what political instability, political instability in terms of what is there political instability in that particular economic or not. So it is what it is indicators of what of political what environment. What about corruption? Is there a lot of corruption in that economy? Is also what is also indicators of what it is also indicators of political what political environment corruption. What about foreign trade? What foreign trade policy? They have a good foreign trade policy. Is also what is also indicators of what is also indicators of political environment. What about their tax policy? What is the rate of tax in that economy? Is it forty percent? Forty percent of your profit? Is it thirty percent of your what? Is it thirty percent of your profit? Is it twenty percent of your what of your profit? So what is the tax policy? What is the tax rate? What about labor law? What about labor law? Do they, do they have a good labor law? What is the minimum wages in that particular economy? What is the minimum one? What is the minimum wages? Then we also have, is there any trade re, uh, re, uh, restriction? Okay, if I'm operating in what, if I'm operating in this particular economic now, do I have opportunity to also trade with what, what we all, uh, with other country as well? Do they have a, what, do they have a, a trade restriction that, oh, everything that you're producing, you are not what you are not allowed to send it out to another country. It is what everything has to be consumed in what in the, in the country where we are producing it. Or did they, uh, did they give a business opportunity to also say that, oh, you can sell it here or you can what? You can export it. So in that particular economy, do they have such? So these are what these are indicators of what political environment. And the better it. Uh, the better some of these indicators, the better for uh, in that particular economy. That is, we uh, we expected some of these factors to be what to be favorable. We expect some of these indicators to be what to be favorable. At least by now, in, the, in this particular century that we have, we don't expect uh, a trade restriction to what okay, whereby you produce in this country now, you can't sell it to what you can't sell your product to. You are not allowed to take your product out. No. So at least I can what I should be able to I should be given the opportunity that oh you can sell it here as well and you can also send it what you can also send it to another country as well. So what about labor law? Is there any what is there any law that is protecting the labor? Is there what is the minimum wages? What is the tax policy? Because there are some time that business one of the things that we consider okay let's say I'm going to what let's say I'm going to a certain country now one of the things I have to have at the back of my mind is that what is their tax what is their tax rate so if I made a profit now how much are they going to what how much am I expected to pay to the government am I paying 30 percent am I paying what 40 percent so let's say in a country a now I'm paying 30 percent what about in company uh, in country B I'm asked to pay what 40%. You can see this can also be what indicates or where uh, the reason why I will not establish my what why I will not establish my business in what in country B because is what their tax rate is what is high. Then we also have what we also have the E, which is stand for what economic environment, economic what environment. What is the economic growth? What is the economic growth? What is the GDP growth last year? What is the GDP growth in like let's say in what like three years ago now? In that economy is their GDP increasing? Is their economic growth, or are they facing with any restrict uh, recession? Or in that particular economy, they are they facing with depression? So that's another thing that also needs to consider under the what the economic what under the economic environment is the what is the economy growing? What is going at what rates? So let's say in country A now the economic growth is what is ten percent. Let's say in, uh, in country B now, the econ uh, economic growth is what? Let's say it's 5%. So you can see now one of the reasons why I would choose country A is as a result of the world. Oh, there's economic work, there's economic growth. And if there's economic growth, that means that whatever I'm selling, whatever I'm what, whatever service that I'm renting, I also what, uh, it's, it's going to be at what? At high sales. What is the exchange rate? What is the exchange rate in terms of their what? In terms of their, uh, the exchange rate, and maybe you want to exchange what one currency to what? to another, what is the rate? 
let's see now what is the exchange rate between what between the euro with the what with the uh with dollar what is the what what is the exchange rate between the nigerian naira with the what with dollar what is the exchange rate between the uh, liberia the ghana cd with what with dollar what is the exchange rate as well because you need this especially if you are what if some of the input that you need in your production if you have to buy it from what from another country and you have to exchange your currency in the process of what in the process of buying so exchange rate is also what is also another factors of what economic what environment what is the interest rate as well what is the level of inflation are they maintain in that particular economy is, are they having what uh, one digit inflation rate or are they having what two digit what two digit uh, inflation rate let's say for example now they have uh seven percent as what that's like a one digit now of what inflation rate but in another country let's say we have 15 percent inflation rate So now you can see I can what I will not I can that one of the this inflation rates can also affect the what the choice of localization of my business. So I always try as much as possible to what to locate my business in a what in economy where the what the inflation rate is what is low. What is the unemployment rate? What is disposable what? What is disposable income? What is the unemployment rate in this particular economy? What's their employment rate? What is the on sorry? What is the unemployment rate? Is the unemployment rate like let's say for example is at eighty percent? Is it ninety percent? So that means that their what their active population is what is working. And if there's a what if there's on or if there's high unemployment, if there's high unemployment, it also what is also what is going to reduce what security risks in that what in that particular economy. Because if everybody is what if everybody is working. They will not be what they will not be thinking of doing some more terrorism. It's only when you are what when you are not working, you'll be thinking, oh, if someone will to give you a little money now, go and carry bomb and bomb a certain what bomb a certain location. Because I don't know why it was a normal woman being you have your what you have your working, you are living fine, you have your own family as well that you're taking care of, you'll be thinking of what taking bomb to kill other human beings. So, but if there's what if there's unemployment now, unemployment also reduce some of these what some of these security what some of these uh, security rates. So, what is the word? The next one, the next business environment, we also have what we call the word the social what the social environment. So, what are the, some of the what what are some of the factors that are made up of what social what social environment? What well, we have what we call the population growth rates, population what population growth was population growth rate in that particular economy is your population growing. So that if you have enough what we have enough population and so that we're able to know that oh if i establish my business there i will have people that are going to work i will have more people that are going to work for what they are going to work for me what is the hate distribution what is the career what career attitude career attitude in terms of what how many do we have how many people do we have large people that are st studying or maybe a science related course do you have large people that are studying what management, what management related costs? How many what medical, what how many people are in line or they are in medical line? So let's say I want to establish hospital now so that I will know that what I will know that oh, in that particular economy, there's what they have I what they have I people that are qualified to be what to be a medical doctor. They have what they have I numbers of people that are what that are chartered accountants. So that they will be able, uh, they will help the business to also to render some service to the business as well. What is the word safety emphasis? Safety emphasis. Do they emphasize on what safety very well, or they just talk about it? Because it's very, uh, safety is also very what very very important thing as well. And safety is a word is a continuous process. You don't say that oh you take care of yourself the way you handle things you handle it very well yesterday and you go to work today you are not going to work you are not going to handle it very well. We are still going to talk about what health and safety in our what in our syllabus as well. What is the lifestyle? What is the cultural, the cultural barrier? What is the health conscious? Are they people? Are they health conscious? Are they eating the right meal? That what they have the what the six balanced diet that is well balanced diet. We are eating a what a certain meal now. This, the balance diet, everything is what is balanced. There's protein. The what is fat and oil, there's mineral, there's water and it, the pr protein, vitamin, everything is what, everything is there. There's mineral there. What is the lifestyle? What is the lifestyle of people? Do they like to social? Do they like to party in that particular thing? You also need to understand it as well. So that let's say, for example, now you want to have a what, you want to establish a what, a nightclub now. So, and if the lifestyle of people, or you are going to what, you want to establish a beauty now. 
So you have to look about the lifestyle. People in that economy, do they like to enjoy? Do they like to party during the weekend? So that if you know that, oh, they like to take beer in this particular economy. So that means that what, if I establish a, what, a brewery now, I know that I'm going to what I'm going to sell. So what is their lifestyle? Do they like to enjoy? What is their cultural barrier? You also need to what, you also need to look at that. So these are what these are indicators for what for social what, for social uh, environment as well. The next one, technology. Technology what technology environment? What are some of the what, what are some of the factors that are made up of what technology environment? We have what technology incentive. Technology, what incentive? The level of innovation, their high level of innovation in that particular economy. What is the incentive? Have they started using what? Have they started using uh, electricity? What car? They only need what battery rather than using what could or what is the, what, what is the level of innovation in that particular economy as well? What is the automation? Is everything? Are they still doing everything manually? Or is there some automation in their process? Is there some computerized system in their process? Or everything is still what is still manual? We have to look at what R and D. That's what we call research and development. What are the, some of the research and development that is taking care on that is in that economy? Is there university? Is there higher institution? Are they what? Are they working on research? What is their level of what research and development? What are they trying to do in relating to science and technology? Are they spending a large amount of their what, some uh, some percentage of their budget on research and development? In what relating to science and what technology? What are they doing? Are they a country that are what innovative? Technology chain. What is the rate of technology as well? You also need to consider that technology awareness in that particular uh, uh, in that particular environment, in that particular economy. Are they aware of what electricity car? Are they aware of what robot? Are they aware of some technology that you can use to carry out your work faster? Okay, that's technology. These are those are factors that are made up of what are made up of technology environment. What about the ecology as well? What about the ecology? The ecology was the what the weather condition. It's also very very important. What is the weather condition? Or is the climate? What is the environmental policy? What is the environmental policy that you don't just well, you don't just pollute the environment what anyhow? You don't just re or release carbon dioxide to the water, to the atmosphere. What is the environmental policy? How are they doing to make the world the environment to be sustainable to the world to the future generation? What are they doing? What about the climate change? Are they interested in what? Are they interested in climate change? Are they doing anything to what to make the environment sustainable? Are they also what are they also having a what a good climate change policy? What about pressure group from what from NGOs? Do we have a lot of what NGO from what ecology? They are trying to take care of the environment. The people, the NGO that are trying to make the what the environment to be sustainable in that particular economy, do you have some of these factors? What is the weather condition? What is the climate? What is the what the environmental policy? What is the climate change? They have pressure for more from the NGOs as well. And the last one now, which is the word, the Lego was the legal environment. What are some of the world? What are some of the factors that are made up of what the legal environment? Discrimination law. That you have, they have a law that is saying, oh, you can't discriminate whether this particular individual is white, whether it is brown, whether it is black. You need to treat everybody what equally. Did they have any discrimination law? Do they have any what antitrust what antitrust law? Do they have any employment law, consumer protection law, copyright and patent law, health and safety law? So under the what the legal environment is all about what is all about law. Do they have employment law that like, oh if you employ someone and you can't just sack him anyhow before you were the layoffs of certain what employee there has to be a notification there have to be some what compensation that you have to pay to him or her. Do they have such law? Do they have consumer protection law? Do they have law that is what that is trying as much as possible to protect the consumer from the uneven practice of the producer? Do they have such? So in economic now, whereby they have such, you can see it to be better. 
So that means that what there's a standard for everything. Oh, every organization, there's a rules and regulation that you have to follow. If you are what, if you are producing a certain item now, then you have to produce it to the best of standard. Health and safety, do they have such that is trying to protect what that is trying to, pre uh, to protect the employee or, and other stakeholders as well? So these are what these are components that are made up of what different business environment. Uh, uh, business environment. We have the what the economic environment. We have the uh, political. We have the social, the technology, the ecology, and the world and the legal. So please try, try as much as possible not to forget some of the what the indicators that are made up of each of these what business environment. We also have what another one which is what making what one two three four five six seven now. We also you know we have what pastel, we have economy, we have social, the technology, the what the ecology, the legal, and we also have another one called what international what international environment. You can see now this one, you can see one, two, three, four, five, six. This six now, they are what they are within a certain economy, and it changes from economic to economy, it changes from country to what to country. There are some countries that will have all these good law. No, they have a discrimination law. You don't want, you don't discriminate based on color. There should not be any form of world racism, consumer protection, copyright and patent law. That is, if I have a certain copyright now, nobody can use it. All right. What about health and safety? So this varies from what country to what to country. But we now have what we call what international environment. International environment is that. For example, now it's this international environment, it will be highly interested to what to companies in what to companies in that deal with what export sometimes. For example, now if I'm exporting what or sorry, if I'm importing a certain what input from another country. So that means that what if anything bad happened in that particular economy now, you no know, indirectly, it will also affect my own business as well. I'm in country A. But I'm bringing in what I bring in some certain input from what country, country B. So if there's a world, if there's a certain problem that is affecting country world, uh, that is affecting country B in relation to the what in relation to the input to the material that I'm bringing in now, you can see indirectly is also what is also affecting me as well. That's what we call what international what international environment. International environment of a business refer to all those elements on the international world, international scale, which can help or inhibit the decision and operation of the business enterprises. Changes in economy, the social, the technology, the political and the public policy issue affect the operation of the world of the business. This is because most companies depend on what imported what raw material, technology and other service or what export their goods and services overseas. So even what even organization now that is what exporting my goods and services to overseas and there's a what there's a problem in that country now. You can see it's affecting me indirectly as well. So but in my what in my own country now if I have a good what if I have a good policy I have the political everything is fine the technology the legal, the ecology, the social everything is fine. But I'm exporting my product to another country. All right. So, but in that country now, there's a world, there's economic problem. We can see now indirectly, it's also what is also affecting me as well. That is what we call what international world, international environment. So, business enterprise seek to what seeks to adopt standard and best practice that can enable them to what to compete what effectively. That can enable them to compete what effectively. Various environmental, social, and legal issues, which enables them from the word international skill, influence decision making in what in domestic organization. So, if there's any factors, if there's any condition that is affecting what, maybe there's a world, there's a, a certain virus in what in country B now, but it is not in country A. But I need a certain input from what from country B. So you can see now indirectly is also what is also affecting me. As well, or if I'm in, uh, I'm exporting, I'm sending some of my words, some of my output to country B now. But in country B now, there's a certain fire that is affecting them. So basically, now you can see it's also affecting my own words. It's also affecting my own business words, own business, uh, and 
organization as well. So we also have uh, things called globalized what globalization. We also have what we call what globalization. We also have what we call what globalization. Globalization. Okay. We also have what we call what globalization. And what do we refer to what as globalization? What do you, what do you, please ask yourself for some certain seconds now. What do you refer to as globalization? And some of us maybe I'm pretty what's sure that you could have heard about this term before globalization what do you think uh what do you think uh what is what do you think is globalization ask yourself first you know this management so there are some things that you can what you can produce a meaningful what you can produce a meaningful presentation to read with by asking yourself as well think of it think of the terms understand the time that should be your, what you're driving for as well what do you what do you understand by globalization So globalization means what? Integrating the economy of a country with the world economy. Integrating the what? Integrating the what? So you can see from this image now, look at what, let's say this country A, this country B, you can see now everybody is what? Everybody is like, is connected together. So we are integrating what? We are integrating people. We are integrating business from different worlds, from different part of the world. That is what we call what globalization, integrating the economic of what of country with the world economy as well, integrating what country A with B with C with D with E. This can also be defined as a process of what worldwide economies what integration, and growing what interdependency interconnectedness. Through a what a flow of what goods, services, capital, people, and information among nations in the world in the modern world. A truly globalized corporation viewed the entire world as a single market. You can see now we are holding it in what in just one single hand. Just one single hand. So that means that we are we are seen as if we are what we are together, we are connected. We see the world as the world as a global village. Everybody is what everybody is together. If something happens in country B indirectly, it may also affect what it may also affect country C as well. So that's what that is globalization. It truly globalized what corporation view the entire world as a world, as a single market, not a divisional world, not a divisional market, as a single market. And it does not differentiate between the domestic market and the foreign market. No discrimination. Whether this is Africa, this is what, this is Europe, this is South America, this is Asia. There's no discrimination between the domestic in my own country, in another country. I see everyone, I see all corporation as a single market. I see every economy as a single, as a single world, as a single market that we are all together. If something is affecting me in country A, indirectly is also affecting country B. We see ourselves as the brothers and wives and sisters as well. If something is happening in what in Libya, it's like affecting what South Africa as well. It's like affecting what Ghana, it's like affecting Italy, it's like affecting some of the other countries as well. That is what globalization, what do we mean by globalization? Globalization means integrating the world, the economic of the world of the country with the world economy. It can also be defined as a process of world, worldwide economic world integration. Worldwide economy is world integration and growing world interdependency. In terms of world interdependency, in terms of what we depend on each other. If I'm not what, if I'm not, if I don't have petrol in my country, I can depend on what I can depend on some country in Saudi Arabia. I can depend on what I can depend on Nigeria. If Nigeria does not have a certain what technology, some factor, I can depend on Japan. If I'm not good in cocoa, I can depend on what Ivy Coast. If I need a good shoe, I can depend on what on Italy. So we see ourselves as what we grow what interdependency. If I need what some agricultural product and I'm in Dubai, 
So whereby my what my land are not factor enough to what to produce some what some uh, some fruit, I can depend on other what on other country as well, and every one of us will be doing fine. So what are the factors inflecting what globalization? What are the factors? Factors influencing what's influencing globalization. According to what we're taking the course in Ecopedia 2002, some of the factors which have contributed to globalization as follows. That is, what are some of the things that contribute to globalization? Why we see ourselves as a what? Why we see, uh, why we see ourselves as a single market? Why we see the world market as single market? Why we will not discriminate between the domestic market and the what and the foreign market? What brought about globalization? What brought about globalization? Whereby what everybody will be doing fine will be depending on each other. I need what I need fruits so I can depend on other country supply me food. Oh, what well, you don't have? What well, you don't have crude oil? I can what I can supply crude oil to you as well. So what bring about globalization like this? Where we grow what growing what interdependency? What bring it about? The phenomenal growth in what in communi communication arising from what fast paced what development in communication technology. And then the word communication also bring about what you bring about uh, globalization, the IT. It bring about what it bring about, you know, and that's one of the what that's one of the major what that's one of the major factors that result in what in globalization is about the what the internet, the IT. Just to well, just to check some of these things on, on what on the internet and what if I want to know what is happening, is there any news in what in other countries as well? Through the internet, I can what like now through the world through the internet, I can know some of it just to what just to check it. If I want to check the okay, what is the what the current is uh the current what the current situation in what let's say we want to know the what the current situation in what in Syria now. So it's true the word Syria today. I can read the zero for it. I can what I can check, but I'm not there. So but the word the internet, the word this the communication, the internet bring about what bring about is bring about uh, is another factor that bring about um is another factor that bring about globalization. Okay. So I'm not in Syria now. This is what this is Al Jazeera now. Okay. So let's continue. Let's continue. Now another one: improve what transportation, what improve transportation service in terms of what you can travel through the what you can travel through the air, you can travel through the sea, you can also travel through the land. We have different means of what of transportation that also help in what in global mass immigration and what movement of people just like transportation as well you can move from one country to what to another a level of what economic activities that adds what that has outgrown national market through industrial what combination and commercial what grouping that what that cross across what national frontier a level of economic activities that are what has grown what national markets. And these things are what things are happening that is what that is beyond our own what national market. And what bring about this, this number four, is still about what internet. Internet also bring about the DIT. International agreement that reduce the cost of what doing business in what in foreign country. We sign what treaties, we sign agreements that oh, I can be selling in your country, you can also be selling in my own country as well. There's free movement. All right. So these are what these are factors that bring about globalization. So what are now the world? What is the implication of what globalization for management and business enterprise? What is the implication of what globalization? What is the what? What is the implication of what implication of management? Implication for what for management? And uh, implication of what globalization for management and business enterprise. One, as a result of greater what liberalization of the flow of goods and services, capital, labor, and information, this can open markets, investment opportunity among what among nations. Yeah, this is opportunity to us. If I want to buy something from what from Amazon now, if I want to buy something from what Aliba, so now I can just what I can order. And they will, they will make the delivery. They will do the work. They will do the cheaping as well.
trade in what in less de uh, developed or developed country of the world to a large extent are at a what a disadvantage arising from more what from more intense competition from better and now complaining in the what in the advanced country yeah the less developed was the less developed and uh, this is like a what <laughs> this is like a disadvantage or it to a disadvantage of globalization as well in terms of what the uh, the what the advanced country are what at i what at i advantage they are going to enjoy what globalization than the what the less developed what the less developed country okay so that's another one let's just say like it was uh, uh like a negative event into the world to the less developed what the left uh less developed what uh, country now Mergers and acquisition and what strategic alliance have result as a what has resulted as forward and what weaker fame are swallowed by the stronger one. So that's also the implication of what that's also the implication of globalization. If I know that oh this country is in what uh, this particular business is in what is in Syria and this is not what is not performing very well. Okay. And me, I'm we are in you, you are in the world advanced country, you are some country in the world in Europe. Then you can do what you can do some margins and acquisition or some strategic or strategic alliance. All right, margins and acquisition and strategic alliance are what resulted as a poorer and weaker theme are swallowed by the world by the stronger one. That is another implication of what another implication of margins and what margins and acquisition, margins and acquisition. Manager are expected to what to be equipped and developed by what by a greater what cross cultural awareness and sensibility as they what as they communicate with their what as they communicate with their counterpart as they communicate with their what with their counterpart. It allows manager to acquire what skills to manage in cultural what diversity. It allow you. Because once you are what you know, you are operating in what you are operating in different world. You are operating in different economies now. So that was that will allow you to know the what the culture. Because as a business organization, you know one of the things that we talk about in the world in the social environment is about what you also need to understand the culture of people in that particular world in that particular environment as well. Because it is very what it is very very important. You have to understand their what you have to understand their what their culture. By cross what by cross cultural inter interaction, FEMA are expected to what to achieve and maintain what higher standard in terms of what of their product and services as the quality, as well as the quality of what management practice. In terms of what it will also make what it will also make organization to be what to be producing according to standard, because you know that the, uh, some of your what some of your product are being absorbed in another country as well. So you are also sending your what you are sending your product to the outside world, and when you are sending your product to the outside world, you should try as much as possible to make it to what to look good. Try as much as possible to produce a what a good product, a quality product that anywhere in the world, once you see that particular product, everybody what everybody will accept it based on the what the quality of the product. So what do we now refer to what environmental analysis? What are the, some of the things, what are some of the tools that we use in what environmental analysis? We have what we call what environmental scanning. Environmental what scanning. When you say you are scanning, what do, what, what do we think we are referring to? When you say environmental what? Environmental scanning. We want to do what business environmental analysis. Now. We want to analyze our environment so if you are analyzing our what environment some of the things that we can use is we can use what we call what the environmental scan consists of what process used by manager to monitor events occurring in the world in the external environment of the world of the organization consisting of what consisting of process used by what used by manager to monitor what event occurring in what occurring in the external what external environment of the organization Manager was manager monitor events in order to understand the nature of the environment and the changes that are occurring. Next, that means that you scan the environment. You scan the environment by what you monitor events. Monitor events in order to do what? In order for you to understand the nature of the environment. So if what if this particular what event occur, 
How does he what? How does the environment react to it? How does it what? How does the environment react to it? So if you want, you just sit down. Oh, this particular situation occurred last year. Do some what scanning in terms of what? How did they react to it? Do some survey. Go to the environment. Ask some people's questions. That oh, when this particular what things occurred during the last year, how do you feel? How did the business environment react to it? So if you are doing all those analyses, you go into the environment based on what event that what that have occurred, and you are trying to what understand how the environment what how the environment changed, how the environment react to that particular event. That is what we call what environmental what environment scanning. It is important to what to study them in order to understand the implication of the data on the growth and the survival of the world of the organization. So you need to do what you can see. It is important to study them, study that particular event, study them in order to do what, in order to understand the implication that this particular event that occurred during the world, really some last year, how the environment react or uh, react to it. What is the implication of this event in our world to our business? And second, to forecast the condition that may affect the organization in the future. To focus what the condition that may affect the organization in the future, that what are some of the conditions that oh, if they what if this particular event occur is going to affect our what is going to affect our business. And thirdly, on the basis of the forecast, keep appropriate what decision to achieve efficiency and effectiveness of the work of the organization. When we say what environmental scanning, environmental scanning consists of process used by manager to what to monitor what events occurring in the world in the external environment of the organization. Manager monitor what events in order to what to understand the what the nature of the environment and the changes that are what that are occurring on it. If a certain what if a certain event occur and you are trying to do what you are trying to understand the what. The effect of the condition, the effect of the event on the business environment, on the environment. That is what we call what? That is what we call environmental scanning. What about environmental forecasting? What do we refer to as what environmental forecasting? From the word forecasting, leave the environment now. When we say forecasting, what do we think we are referring to? When we say forecasting, what do you think we are what we are referring to? Okay, you know, we say what scanning now is about what? It's about checking what, what has happened and looking what, checking the, how the environment, what we have to eat, to think that what things that have happened. That is what we call what scanning. Oh, this particular event occurred last year. When you are now studying what, how the environment we have to eat, that is what we call what? That is what we call environmental what? That's what we call environmental scanning. So what we now refer to was forecasting. What do you think when we say what environmental forecasting? Remove the forecasting now. I'm uh, sorry, remove the environmental now. When we say forecasting, what do you think you are what we are referring to? Trust me, think of that now, please. For some seconds, please. So what do you think we are referring to what environmental what environmental forecasting forecasting avoid what manages the opportunity to acquire what a forward knowledge of what lies ahead in order to what in order to cope with their business what environment that's what we call what forecasting that is what we call what forecasting. It allows manager, it gives managers opportunity to work, give them a what a full knowledge about what, what can happen in the what in the future. The future cannot be predicted with certainty, but it can be forecasted. 
in what? In the sense that one can have informed what? Protection of future events or what? Or condition. Yes, it is true. We can't forecast the what? The environment with what? Certainty. We can't be 100% correct. Even when you establish a budget in your organization, it is very what it is very rare for you to have the what the same word uh, what you budgeted for to equal what you want what the actual performance is that is the budgeted and the what and the actual there will always be some time um, variance as well so sometimes what you owe you can uh, you can make a forecast that oh by this also yes I want to what my sales should be what ten thousand ten thousand but you can get there and you may have a sales of what fifteen thousand naira. So know that is what favorable to you now, and you can have less than that. So environment, we can't forecast what was going to happen in the environment with what with certainty as well. But even though we can't forecast it to be hundred percent, but we able to we are still going to learn from the process. We are still going to get a what a little what a little knowledge. The future cannot be predicted with certainty, but it can be forecasted in the sense that one can have a what informed projection of a future event or condition. The, the scope and the area where forecasting can be done are in areas of what political, the legal, the technology, the, ec the economy, the ecology, the culture, and what the social, what the environment. At least, for example, now if there is no what, if there's no changes in what the, if there's no changes in governments the political environment may not what may not change it's only when there's a world maybe there are some time when there's a changes in government the other government is doing it this way before and we have a new government in what in power now can say oh i don't want to do it well i don't want to do it in that way So maybe if there's no word, if there's no changes in what's in government, now you can see our political world, political environment can be a little bit more stable. The legal as well, the technology may not really be stable because technology environment changes often. Technology is that what it has fast pace. The economy, some of the indicators that we look at, the ecology, the culture, and the world the social. Environmental forecasting is a crucial because vital information generated about the future course of action become the basic input or the raw material for managerial what for managerial decision making planning and what and control forecasting is just what forecasting is just to acquire a what a forward a full knowledge of what lies ahead if i say oh i forecast by oh these are what i'm expected to do in this or so yes but if i'm doing we are doing this forecasting it's it is what it is not certain that what we forecasted is now that's what we're going to what to take place okay it is very well, it's very difficult to what it is not even what it's not even possible. It's not even what it is not what the future cannot be predicted. We said you can't say this what is going to happen what tomorrow, but you can try as much as possible so that you're able to, even though you didn't get to the top, you're able to get close to it, you're able to acquire some knowledge as well. This the uh, the scope and area where forecasting can be done. Where, where can we do forecasting on the business environment, uh, type of business environment that we talk about? We can do forecasting on what political, the legal, the technology, the economy, the ecology, the cultural, and the what and the social what environment. Okay. So let's do what? Let's do some recap of some of the things that we watch, some of the things that we talk about. We talk about what? We talk about business environment. What is the meaning of business environment? We say that those are what? Those are condition. Those are condition or factors that are external to the world, that are external to the business. But what? But influence the world, but influence the business organization. For, for, what are the important of what? What are the important of business or what are the important of business environment? The time, opportunity, and trend. It gives direction, clarity. Clarity serves as a continual learning process for manager, image building, identification of strength and words and weakness. Type of what type of business environment? We have the political, the economic, the social, the technology, the ecology, and the world and the legal. And we also look at some of the words, some of the factors, some of the indicators of what. Of each of these words, economic environment, and we also have another one called what international, international environment as well. We talk about globalization. What are the factors, the implication as well? Uh, environmental analysis tools, 
like scanning and what and forecasting. So that's a brief recap of some of the things that we talk about so far. Now let's now talk about what you can see from the world from the screen. Now we have what we call corporate social what corporate social responsibility, corporate social what corporate social responsibility, and company engaging what in corporate social responsibility in terms of what giving back to the world, giving back to the society. And why did organization also need to give back to the society? Because your input is from the world, from the environment. Your, ups, your output is also absorbed by the world, is also absorbed by the world, by the environment. So as organization, you also need to try as much as possible to what to give back to the world. You also need to try as much as possible to give back to the world, to the environment. Because your input, where do you get it from, is from the environment. Your output, you also send it back to the world, to the environment. So you also need to try as much as possible to give back to the world, to give back to the environment as well. So that's what we call what social what social responsibility. Okay. So have a look at this now for some for some seconds, please. Social what? Social responsibility of a business refers to the obligation of a business enterprise to adopt policy and plan for action of action, policies and plans of action that are desirable in terms of what expectation, value, interest of the world of the society. That is, social responsibility refers to the obligation of a business enterprises to what? To adopt policy and plan of action that are desirable in terms of what? Sorry, in terms of what expectation, values, and interests of the society. Social responsibility has become a what a major issue in what in management. That is social responsibility. As organization, you also need to try as much as possible to be what social. You need to you have to be socially responsible. And if you are socially responsible, it will also enhance your what your public what your public image. It will also enhance your what your public image. So organization, you need to try as much as possible to be socially what responsible. Try to be a good organization that is also meeting the thing, that is also meeting the need of the society. Is meeting what the need of the society. Try to be organization of such. So what are the words? What are the areas of what social responsibility now? We have what we have some core words: ecology and what environmental what environmental quality so what are the, some of the things on our what ecology and what environmental quality we have what pollution cleanup and prevention of what prevention of damage to the what to the natural environment pollution what pollution cleanup in terms of what business organization if you cause any what any pollution in the environment do the what clean it up clean it up and prevention of damage to the world, to the natural world environment. So if you what pollution cleaning up, if you pollute the environment, release some carbon dioxide to the environment, try as much as possible to what to clean it up. Don't leave it. Oh, don't leave it because you are paying what you are paying uh, tax now. Okay, it is what this government that should do that. No, don't pollute the environment. Organization try as much as possible to make the world the environment sustainable for future generations. Dispersion of or spread of what spread of industry, land uses and what beautification, land uses and what beautification. It is not only during the world, it's not only during the world, the Christmas that you will you beautify the world, the environment. It is not only once in a year. Try as much as possible to do some beautification as well. What about area of another area of social responsibility is what consumption. Fear and true in leading, advertising and what business operation. Fear what? Fear what? Fear advert. If this particular equipment is going to use four hours, tell the world, tell the consumer that oh, this particular product will use what? We will use four hours. Don't say because of what you want them to what to buy it. That's why you are making what you are making some fake adverts. That is not what. That is not good. 
product warranty and service. At least if you're able to what warrant give a warranty to the customer that oh, if anything happens to this product within the what the next 10 years, within the next five years, you return it back to you. Control of what harmful what control of harmful product. Don't release harmful product to the world to the society. Don't release what don't uh, don't release any product that will cause what harm to the world to the society. So this is another area of what social responsibility. That is this the word according to what in nineteen what in nineteen eighty nine. Managers should pay what should pay particular attention to their social responsibility in the following way. So, according to this management scholar in 1989, he classified that these are the areas of what these are the areas of what social responsibility, ecology, and what environmental quality, consumption, community need, uses of what expertise to solve local problems, use of expertise to solve what local problem. What try as much as possible to engage people that what that, uh, that that study the environment, people in what let's say environmental toxicology. Uh, try as possible to help these people use expert to solve problem. Help with what health care facility and what and education, and that's why to some uh, to some of our students in what in Nigeria, at least I'm very aware I'm also from Nigeria as well. You can see in our what in our higher institution now you can see some what some organization was renovating some what renovating some building bringing up you can see in some community now you see some health center that is what that is being constructed by some what by some certain organization that is good you are meeting the need of the community give them what education area that you discover oh their school there's no what the school is not really good some of the roof as what well as damage you are what you are not leaving it for the government you are also doing it that is what socially responsible government relation having what having a good relation with the government is also what the community need lobbying okay so that's another what the community need we only have to uses of expertise to solve problem Aid with what aid uh, aid with healthcare facility and education. Another area of what another area of social responsibility, which is the D, is the word government. What government relation? Lobby with them. Control of business through political or through political action. Lobby with them. If the government is doing this, try as much as possible to tell them. Ah, it can also serve like what advisory to them as well. Another area which is the E, the fifth one, uh, is what. Minority and the what the backward community. Minority and the backward community. What are some of the things that you can do for them? Minority and what backward community. Training of employed. Training of what unemployed people that are not unemployed gives them some what some soft skills, some technology skills, some highly demand skills. Try as much as possible to help them. Those in the rural area, not just on the what on the urban alone that you be taking care of. Equal employment opportunity, equal unemployment opportunity should be given to everyone, not just, oh, this one is white, this one is black. There should not be any discrimination. Locating plants and what office in the minority area is also things that organization can do as well. And in what, in, uh, in taxation, as the case of what Nigeria, there's what the government has some what, some incentive that we are uh, that they give to what to business organization that are what that are established in the what in a rural area they have some incentive that they give them as well locating plants and what office in minority area purchasing from what from backward communities is also another thing that uh, business can do to what to for the minority and the backward buy from them as well labor relation that's another one that's another area of what that's another area of social what social responsibility improve occupational what health and safety try as much as possible to what health and safety should be what should be paramount health and safety of your employee should be paramount to you creation of what employment opportunity is also very what is also very important and another area is also what we call share with us what relation improve your corporate governance which we are still going to talk about before the end of today's class, we are going to talk about what corporate governance, improve financial what disclosure, try as much as possible to disclose all necessary what financial information to your shareholder. There should be a what a full disclosure. Don't what don't hide any information from them. Corporate what philanthropy, 
financial support for art and world culture, special scholarship and gift to education, financial world, financial support and what and charity is also very what is also very very important that organization can what can do in relation to what in relation to in relation to shareholders in relation to what in relation to share with us so these are what these are different what these are different area of what of um, social responsibility so have you look at this screen now So please don't forget, according to uh, this management scholar in what, in 19, what, in 1989, he said these are areas of what, these are areas of special, uh, social responsibility in which managers should pay attention to ecology and environmental quality. These are, if you check some of your insights, these have been what, these have been tested before as well. Consumption, community need, you also have the what the government was, government need as well the minority and backward community labor relation and shareholders relations as well they are very important place then social what social responsibility is also examined in terms of what economic what legal ethical and what philanthropic so that means that according apart from what apart from this management was classification in 1989 social responsibility can also be classified uh, classified into two we have economic responsibility Legal like responsibility and what ethical what ethical responsibility and we also have what philanthropy. I usually use the memo and call what Pele, P E L E, P E L E for this. I usually use that acronym Pele, P E L E. The P uh, is philanthropic, or sometimes we call it the political. Uh, and then we also have the he is for economy. The hell is what lega, and the second e is what is ethics, ethical. So these are the what the further, uh, further forward, further forward classification, further forward, further forward classification of what of social what of social responsibility. So what is the economic responsibility? Economic responsibility requires the business enterprises to utilize the resources of the society or the community effectively. Don't waste what don't waste economy, don't waste uh, community what resources, whatever the resources that you are using, try to make the best uses of it. Don't waste it. Don't say because you have what you have large amount of it at your what at your disposal. Always try as much as possible to be economic in what in your the resources that you are what that you are using. Then we also have what legal. Legal just means in terms of what obeying all what obeying all rules and what obeying all rules and what all rules and regulation. So when you are what when you are obeying all rules and regulation, that is your what you are legally what. That's what we call what legal responsibility. Is by obeying what by obeying all rules and what all rules and regulation. That is what we call what legal what legal responsibility. Then we also have what ethical, ethical responsibility. And when we say ethical responsibility, this has to do with what business doing what is what this doing what is right at what at all time, doing what is right as what at all time. That is what we call the what the ethical what the ethical responsibility. So ethical responsibility has to do with what doing what is right at what at all time. Legal responsibility has to do with what legal responsibility has to do with what obeying all laws and what obeying all laws and regulation. And economic what economic responsibility of business organization. Sometimes we can also refer to that economic responsibility of a business organization are to what are to produce quality and harmless goods and services at what available price economically we say economic what economic responsibilities of a business organization are to what are to produce what quality and harmless quality and what quality and harmless what 
quality and harmless goods and services at a what at an available price for the members of their world, for the members of their consistency or their environment. And safety of their world and safety of their stakeholders as well. So when what if organization is what you are producing a quality what a quality product, a harmless good product at a what at a reasonable price. That is also what we call what economic what responsibility. Don't forget, economic responsibility can also be referred to what producing what quality and harmless what goods and services at a what at a reasonable what at a, at a reasonable price for members of their what of their consistency. Producing a good what a good product, a product that will not harm a what a product that is what the price is what is reasonable. So if you are doing that as organization, that you are also doing what we call what economic responsibility. The legal responsibility has to do with what? Uh, the obligation of the business to obey laws and regulation. The obligation of the world, the obligation of the business to obey all what? Laws and regulation of the society in which they are what? In which they operate. That is what legal responsibility. Legal responsibility has to do with what? Obey laws and reg uh, regulation of the society. Where they what where they operate, Econ or ethical responsibility has to do with what has to do with the business doing what is right at all time. Ethical responsibility has to do with what with the business doing what is right at what doing what is right at all time. And we also have what we call what uh, philanthropic or sometimes we call it what discretional what we call it what uh, discretional or sometimes we also call it voluntary. We have four names for it. We have we can call it discretion, we can call it uh, we can call it philanthropy, and we can also call it what voluntary responsibility. Don't forget, we can call it what discretional, philanthropic, we can also call it what uh voluntary responsibility. And uh, uh, let me explain this. Uh, when we say what well, this involves business organization doing what the society desire for them, desire from what from them. You are if you are doing what the what you are doing what the society desire from you, but if you didn't do it, nobody would nobody will harm you. If you did not do it, and that's why we sometimes we call it what voluntary. It is what it is voluntary. It is desire that a business enterprises should use its discretion to solve some of the problem of the society, such as what passive poverty, lack of infrastructure in the community where they operate, poor health and educational facility. So if we didn't do some of these things, infrastructure in the community, health, educational facility, if we didn't provide it, no, that's not, nobody will, nobody will sue you for this, all right? Nobody will sue you for this, that you're not providing health care, you're not providing educational facility in the community where you operate. Nobody will do what? Nobody will sue you, but that's what we call it discretion. Or sometimes we call it philanthropic, or we call it what? Voluntary. This one is at your own discretion. If you didn't do it, no, no harm. But the other three you needed, economic what? Economic responsibility has to do with what? Producing what? Armless, producing what? Quality product. Producing quality product, producing what harmless product at a what at a reasonable price. Legal responsibility has to do with what obeying all laws and what regulation. Ethical responsibility has to do with what the business should do what is right at what at all time. So these three they are what they are important as a business you have to do it. But the uh, the last one is that's your own discretion. Okay, so we can also categorize social responsibility into this uh, into these four ways. Then we also have another thing we also need to talk about argument what argument for and argument what argument against argument for and argument against. There are some what there are some uh, there are some school of thought in management that what that disagree that companies should not do what companies should not do CSR. You are already paying tax to the what you are already paying tax to the government. Why do you have to be doing CSR? Why do you have to be providing health facility, educational facility? Why? So, and that school of thought is what we call the word the managerial capitalism, or sometimes we call it the word the classical view school of thought. And it was led by what? By Fredman, the Nobel Prize winner. He's a Nobel Prize winner economist. And is the word, is the advocate for what? For classical what? The classical view. And the classical view is of the opinion that business organization should only what? Should only be socially responsible to share with us. That is what they are saying. You should only be responsible to your what to your shareholder. You don't be responsible to any other thing again. 
That is what the word, that is what the school of thought is saying. We call it the word, the managerial capitalism or the classical view. And the word, the, uh, the head of this, uh, this classical view is what is uh, Fredman, is a, what is the Nobel economics, uh, economics. He's the one that is advocating for, oh, organization, you don't need to be socially responsible to any other person, except your word, except your shareholder. Don't be thinking about what taking care of the society. You should only be thinking about what you should only be thinking about your words. You should only be thinking about your words about your shareholder. And we have the second word. We have the second view. That's what we call the social word, the social economic word, the social economic view. And the social economic view is in what is in opinion that oh, as a word, as a company, you should be what you should not just be what you should not just be uh, socially responsible to what. To your shareholder, but you need to be what you need to be responsible to what to your stakeholders. They use the name what call what corporate what stakeholders. In terms of what you need to be responsible to stakeholders, you know, and we have different types of stakeholders: the customer, the community, the government, the employee, the manager, and so on like that. So that is what the what the social what the social economic view is saying that oh, it's not just about your what it's not just about your shareholder. You also need to take care of what other people as well. So that's what we call the argument for and the argument what and the argument against. So argument for those are the what the economic what the social economic view. They are in support that the business organization should what the business organization should be what should be socially what responsible. That is the support social what social involvement of business. They support this argument for they support it. And the school of thought that support this is what we call the what the social economic school of thought. The what the school that against it is what we call the managerial capitalism school of thought. All right. So let's start from it. One, they say what business organization are expected to respond what more favorably to the what to the society in terms of what in terms of need. In terms of what, in terms of need, because they receive their character from the society and they are, they are chartered from the society and their employer still goes back to the society. Yes, in terms of what you make profit from the world, you make profit from the environment. So you also need to work to give back to them as well. That is what they are saying. Your input is from the environment. Your output is also what you're also giving back to the environment and they will pay for it. The creation of better social uh, environment benefit what both society and business. Society gain through what better neighborhood and employment opportunity. Business was benefit from a better community as the source of his workforce and the consumer of his products and services. So it benefits the two of us. If you do it, it's going to benefit you directly or what or indirectly. So the word when organization is socially responsible, the benefit goes to the what it goes to both the society and the what and the what the company as well. Business has a greater deal of power, that is, it is risen and should be what accompanied by equal amount of what responsibility. Gov uh, business have power, they have what? They have resources. So these resources as well, you know, we have organization resources is much. We have what, uh, we have intellectual resources, we have the financial resources, we have the human. So try as much as possible to discharge some of these resources that you have, some of this power that you have as well. Try to what, give some of them a little bit to the world, to the societies as well, okay? The, we, the society is not demanding much from you. Just give them a little of your what, of the resources that you have, whether financial or what, non-what, non-financial resources. Social what, social uh, involvement discourage additional government regulation and intervention. Yes, yeah, so in terms of what once you do it, it discourages what further government intervention. Government can use the what the resources uh, to build a certain schools now. They can use it in another location. Okay, so social involvement discourage what additional government regulation and intervention because once you do it, the government can channel the what the resources to another what to another public what to another public need. Social responsibility is long is in the long interest of the world, the stockholder. It's in long interest because you are going to have a public image, a good public image. And once you have a good public image, it's also what indirectly is going to increase your what your revenue in the what in the long run as well. Social what involvement creates or what a favorable public image. I think I've mentioned that as well. That is, if you do it, then that's what we call the argument for. The argument for is those are supporting it. So why do we say that uh, companies should be social responsible? These are some of the points that we are referring to. These are some of the reasons why we say what 
uh, business should be socially responsible. Social involvement creates what a uh, favorable public image. A business has its was as its resources. Business has the resources specifically. A business should use its talented manager as well as well capital resources to solve from, uh, to solve some social work problem. To solve some social work problem, use your work, use your resources very well. Discharge some of them. You have what you have a good resources. Your managers, your employee, they are well equipped in that in their various area. So try as much as so, uh, possible to use some of the what the managerial skills as well to the what to the environment. Okay, so these are the arguments for. And we also have what arguments, what arguments against, arguments, what arguments against. And these are what these are arguments that is saying that uh, what uh, arguments against is or uh, she's not supporting it. We are not supporting what we are not supporting our business to be socially responsible. If you want to be socially responsible, it is only what you also need to be responsible to your shareholders. The primary task of a business is to maximize profit by focusing strictly on economic activities. Social investment reduces what economic efficiency in terms of what we do, let me just call it number one. Please don't forget one. Say what reduction of profits. What we are talking about in this one and is about what reduction in what in profit. So if you have what if you want to be socially responsible, it's going to reduce your what. It's going to reduce your profits because if you want to build some what health facilities, some educational facility, now it comes with what it comes with cost. So another thing that we can also see argument for. Let me break it down for you. You can say what cost. The first one I want you to see was reduction of profit. One, reduction of what profit. I'm explaining what, what, what I have here with you now. One, say what reduction of profit is going to reduce your profit. Two, write what cost. Two, write what cost. Two, cost. The first one, reduction of profit. That is, we are socially responsible. It's going to reduce your pro, uh, it's going to reduce your profit, and that is it comes with what just like the second one that Nick mentioned. It comes with what it comes with cost. And another one which I also want you to write is what too much power, too much what too much power, too much what too much power. In terms of what business is one of the most powerful sector of the world of the society. Businesses is one of the world the most powerful sector in the of the world of the society. So additional social involvement could crew, uh, additional social involvement could what could further increase its power and social what and social influence. I'm explaining, I'm explaining to you now some of the things that are I say one now, say what reduction in profit. Two now, say what cost. Three, right, what too much power. And I'm not explaining that now that business, uh, business is one of the most powerful sectors in the society. So if there are also what social uh, what social involvement now will create additional what social involvement will create additional what social involvement will create additional power to the business. The first one, right, what profit, the second one cause the third one and too much power. And I've explained too much powers to be in terms of what business is one of the most powerful sectors in the world in the society. So social involvement will further give them what high what high power. And another one, which is what number four. Now I want you to write what go dilution, go what go dilution, go dilution in terms of what uh, go dilution is that I cannot explain go dilution. Uh, go dilution in terms of what business being socially responsible dilute the reason the organization was created. I think I'm fine. Like that. Business what uh, business being socially responsible dilute the reason the organization was created. Because now you did not what if you remember during when we are talking about business organization, we did not say that what business is created for what for the society. We didn't say that business is created for what for the betterment of the society. Okay, so if you are now saying that you want to be what socially responsible, you know you are thinking what you are thinking of two things now. You be thinking of about your own social at uh, your economic activities. You also be thinking about your society. You know that what there's a gold dilution now, because your your principal activity is what the economic what the economic activities is the economic goal. Sell your service, uh, sell your goods, render your service, and get what and get paid, get being paid. So if you are not thinking of the word the society now, you can see that the word there's a go dilution. That's what we are think, talking about. Go words, go dilution. Go words, go dilution. 
go dilution. And another one I also want you to write what that is five now. Say what lack of required skills. Lack of what? Lack of required skills. Lack of what required skills. I want you to note this down. Now I'm explaining it on my hands now. Lack of what? Lack of required skills. And lack of when we say lack of required skills is that what business does not have the what does not have the skills to manage the environment. Because as a manager now, maybe you study what business administration, you study accounting. You, as a manager, you, you know, you didn't study environmental toxicology. So you don't have what, you don't have the required skills to manage the world, to manage the environment. So the training and the ability of what most managers are towards the economic matter. The training and what the training and ability of most managers that we are going to be talking about is towards what economic activities and not social matters. So you don't have the word, you don't have the required skills. So how do you want to perform very well if you don't have the skills? Because you are not trained for that. The training and ability of most manager is towards what economic matters, not towards, not social what, not social matters. And the last one now. Lack of what total support. I want you to note that one too down. Lack of what? Lack of social, lack of social support. Lack of what? Lack of social support. Lack of social support. In terms of when we say well, lack of what total support, lack of social or support now is that we are talking about that it is not all stakeholders that accept that the company should be doing CSR. Because if you do CSR, you are socially responsible, you are trying to meet the need of the society, it will reduce your profit. So it is not all st stakeholders that what that support it. That's another argument or argument against what social what responsibility. So I think I, I give what I able to break it down into what to six now. I say what the first one we have what the first one we have we have what reduction and what reduction in profits. We have what we have what cost. We have too much power. The first one, I think I made mention of what uh, was this gold dilution. I also make of what lack of required skills and what lack of what lack of uh, total what lack of total support. So those are the what the argument against social responsibility. So what are now the what the changing concept of what of. Uh, so, uh, social responsibility now in terms of what uh, the concept of what social responsibility as well is what is uh, is changing is what is changing first of all and that's what we call what we call it uh, in management the the next what next uh, subject that you'll be coming across at your what as your later study in this professional world this becoming a what a chartered accountant we are what we call what we call it organizing uh, ethical stance ethical what ethical stance and ethical stance is the what is the position that the organization see himself the position that the organization see himself in relation to the what in relation to the what to the society the position that what the organization take in relation to the what to the society so the for at the early stage at the early stage of social responsibility, the focus was on the owner of the world, of the business, which is the shareholders. So that means that our focus is only about what, at the first stage, is that, is all about what, is all about our shareholders. But at the world, in the next stage, which is the second stage, the world, the organization started thinking about what other stakeholders. The organization started thinking about what other what other stakeholders as well. Although I'm thinking about what I'm thinking about my shareholders, but at the higher rate, but I'm also thinking about what other stakeholders at a lower rate. But in what at the early stage, this, let's just say what we have four stages. The stage one, we have what we call what at stage one, the focus is all about shareholder. I'm not thinking about any social involvement. I'm not thinking about any other stakeholder. I'm only thinking about my owner, the shareholders. But at the later stage, let me just say the what the second on the second stage, I've started thinking about what other words, I've started thinking about other what stakeholders at the minimal level as well. Then at the what at the third stage, I've started giving what I've started giving a crucial on. Uh, the next stakeholders to what to attract the attention of the manager at the customer, the employee, distributor, other things. I've started giving what I've started giving a high attention to other stakeholders. 
The first stage, I'm only thinking about what? Share with us, my share with alone. The next stage, I've started thinking about what I'm thinking at higher rate. Now, let's just say 80% my share with that, the remaining 20 uh, and the remaining 20% to other stakeholders. But in stage what? In stage uh, the third stage, then I've I started thinking about my share on uh, other stakeholders as a what at a very high rate. And the last stage is the what the last stage is uh, responsibility to the society. That is, we call it what being shapers of the world of the society being shapers of the world being shapers of the society in terms of what organization has seen himself at the world at the last stage that oh if anything is happening in the world in the environment they see themselves as what as people that need to what they see themselves as people that need to take care of it so that's the changing concept in what in csr so what are some of the recap that we have done now some of the recap we talk about what we talk about social what we talk about social responsibility right we talk about social what social responsibility social responsibility is about what giving back to what giving back to the society we have different classification of what area of what social responsibility uh, in 19 what in 1989 we talk uh, classify it into like seven section we have the ecology and environmental quality the consumption the community need the government relation minority and backward community labor relation and we also have share with us we also have other classification where we classify into economy, the legal, ethical, and what philanthropy. When we say eco uh, economic responsibility, economic responsibility of a business is producing a what a harmless product, a quality product at the what at a reasonable what at a reasonable price to the what to the uh, to the society. Legal responsibility is about what obeying all laws and what laws and regulation. We talk about what ethical responsibility. Ethical responsibility is about what doing what is right at what at all times. And we also talk about discretion or sometimes we call it philanthropic or sometimes we call it what voluntary in terms of what it is at your own pace. If you didn't do it, nobody what nobody query for that. We talk about the argument for an argument against. We have some school of thought that support and so, some school of thought that what that is against company doing what CSR. And we talk about the changing concept at the early stage. Our majority, our attention, 100% attention is given to what the share with us, the owner of the business. At the next stage, we started thinking about what we started thinking about the other stakeholders as well. The next stage as well, we think about other stakeholders. And the last stage, we think about what the society as well. At the last stage, the uh, the, the company see themselves that is there anything that is happening on the society, they see themselves as the shapers of the world, shapers of the society. So with ethics, what are the what, what are the various words? What are the various area of words of ethics? I know ethics has to do with what ethics deal with what is right and what is what ethics deal with what is right and what is wrong. Ethics deal with what ethics deal with what is right and what is wrong. So look at the definition. They say ethics what ethics is originated from what from Greek word, which means what echo. It means what character, conduct, and activities of people based on what moral, what moral principle, based on what moral principle. It is concerned with what is right and what is right. That is what that is ethics. Ethics is concerned with what what is right and what is wrong. And very soon you are going to be what in what there's another area you call corporate strategic management. When you are trying to become a chartered accountant, we have ethics as well. We have different words. We have different ethical theory. Okay. So, and at, we have what we have three types of ethics. We have what we call personal ethics, we have what we call business ethics, and we also have what we call professional ethics. Ethics can be what divided into three. We have personal ethics, we have business ethics, and we also have what we call what uh, we also have what we call professional ethics. So business ethics sometimes can be called what managerial ethics, and that's what we are what that's what we are looking at at this what at this stage. Managerial ethics, or sometimes we call it what business ethics. Managerial ethics can be seen as the standard of behavior guiding individuals in the discharge of their work, in the discharge of their work assignments, in the discharge of their work assignments with one another, and uh, with what and with their and with their organization. That is managerial ethics. Managerial ethics can be seen as what as a standard of behavior guiding individual manager in the discharge of their work, in the discharge of their work. In the discharge of their work, in the discharge of their work, vice vice their, their relationship with, with one another and their organization as well. That is what we call manager ethics. That is the standard of what behavior guiding what individual manager in the discharge 
of their work, in the discharge of their work uh, assignment. So those ethical words, those ethical, those right on what is right and what is wrong, that is guiding you on how you discharge your work, your work assignment to your organization is what we call managerial ethics. So what are the words? What are the areas of managerial ethics? Uh, we have three areas of managerial ethics. We have one, how the organization treats its employee in terms of what recruitment and separation, the working condition, the wages and incentive, individual respect as human being as well. There has to be a dignity of labor, whether the health and safety, we are still going to talk about health and safety. Is there any health and safety principle that is put in place by the world, by the organization? How, how did the organization treat his world, his employee? And another thing is as well, how employee treat the organization as well. <laughs> so because that is what the three area of managerial ethics how did organization treat its employees the second one is that how did employee also treat his what organization and the third one is that how the organization treat economic agent like the customer the competitors the shareholders the regulatory authority supplier dealers and what and junior how do you treat some of these people is there any conflict of interest is there a confidentiality as employee now are you what are you employee that is disclosing your what your what uh, your organization information to what to uh, another what another party are you what honesty and what and accountability so is this principle there our employee will treat the organization how the organization treat the economic world economic agent as well how do you treat your customer and you're able to treat your customer right the goods that you are selling to them should be what goods that will not arm them it should be a what quality product your competitors they have to be a what a fair competitors you compete fairly what about your shareholders give them what give them the maximum attention pay them their dividend as and when due what about regulatory what authority comply with what comply with different regulations so that you avoid what fines and penalty your supplier pay them as at when due as well your dealer union whatever what deals that you are expected to pay do it for them so recruitment, how do you recruit? That is the first one is how the organization treat is your employee. What is the recruitment exercise? What is the working condition? Is there working condition? I will even at work now. My what? My mind is at rest that nothing will happen. What is the wages and incentive that you're giving them? Are you respecting them? Or you are just treating them anyhow just because you are the one that is paying them the salary? Health and safety, is there any health and safety policy that is put in place? Do you have a first aid in your what in your organization? How did the uh, employee also treat the world? How did the employee also treat the organization? It's also another area of managerial ethics. Conflict of interest, confidentiality, honesty, and what and accountability. We have code of ethics. Code of what? Code of and when we say code of ethics, code of ethics are what? Code of ethics are general guidelines with respect to the what values and ethical standards. That should be what? That should be used by manager to guide their decision. Area of consideration as they affect ethics and which must be addressed so as to what effect positive results, peace and progress and harmony are what that is what when we say code of ethics, code of ethics is the word is a document that contains the word, the guidelines on how you are expected to behave within the organization. So we have what we have code of ethics. So what are the some of the things that code of ethics is going to say? Every organization has code of ethics that, oh, if you are working in this organization, maybe before you even was, before you start your work, when you was, when you first came into the organization, they will give you their code of ethics that, oh, as our employee, these are things that we expected you to what to do. So what are some of the content of code of ethics? Bribe, don't accept bribe. Honest of what? Record keeping, keep record honesty. Misappropriation of corporate assets. Don't use what? Don't use corporate what assets in what? In what in a way that is not what that is not good. Confidentiality of corporate information. Don't disclose our don't disclose this company information to third party. Political what political contribution. Conflict of interest. Customer and supplier relationship. Trials. Customer is always right. Try as much as possible to what to maintain a what a good information with what with our uh, customers and what and supplier. Have a good relation with them. Don't abuse them. So these are some of the what these are some of the content of what code of ethics things that code of ethics is going to talk about. It's going to talk about bribery. Don't accept bribe. Honest of record keeping. Don't what misappropriation of corporate assets. Don't misappropriate companies' assets. 
whatever but assets of the company that they are using maybe you are using the company on uh, laptop that laptop that you're using that the one that what that provided for it try as much as possible to what to keep them confidentiality of corporate information don't what don't what don't uh, disclose your what your company's information to third party political contribution avoid conflict of interest have a good what customer and supplier what relationship ethical concerns of what ethical concerns of what of managers ethical concerns of manager as they relate to different what as they relate to different public ethical concerns of manager as they relate to different public we have what employee the wages what that is ethical concern and that is each of these stakeholders now they have different needs like we make mention in the what in the previous class we have different stakeholders and each of these stakeholders have different needs. that's what brings about stakeholders conflict is as a result of and what employee is expecting is different from what what supplies is expecting. So ethical concerns of manager as they relate to what different public as what employee now is, is interested in wages, recruitment process, condition of service, retention, welfare package should be fair and what and just that's what employee is interested in. Labor union they should be honest in honoring what agreement good strategy in handling what negotiation and what an industrial action that is what labor union is what in, interested in trade association loyalty and faithfulness in honoring what agreement dealer honor in what honoring on honesty in honoring what agreement engagement and disengagement of what process you can see each of these what each of these stakeholders have different things that the organization is expected to discharge today as employee now what are the things that uh, organization should try as much as possible to do to their employee the good wages recruitment process a favorable recruitment for a what a stress-free recruitment process Condition of service should be what well, should be favorable. Refreshment, give them the what a proper welfare package. A labor union now, they will expect you to honor the, any agreement that you have with them. If the labor, if the minimum wages that you sign agreement with the labor union, you say what 30,000 there, make sure that what every organization that is in your organization, there's no anyone that is any less than what 30,000 there per month or that is what honor agreement for them. Trade association, the loyalty, the faithful in honoring what agreement that you have with trade association as well. Dealer, be honest, you have to be honest with them, those that you deal with, your customer, product safety, the whatever the product that you are what that you are producing, make sure that it's not a product that is going uh, that is not going to harm them, it's not going to affect their health. Value preposition, whatever the, the value should be what or that is the utility that they are going to derive from the what from consuming your product or using your service should be what should be hundred percent. Faithful advertising, if you are what if you are advertising, make it to be faithful. Don't lie. So that you are lying, you are, there's, uh, you are doing some what advice that is not what that is not true. Just uh, just just because of what you just want them to buy the product, and at the end of the, they buy the product, some of the what what you claim in your advert is not what is not where to be found. So that's what the what the ethical concern of what the ethical concern relating to customer product safety is very very important. The value should be there. Faithful advice is also very important. To what to supplier honesty in what, honoring what agreement that is for example a supply the supplier supply you and I expect my payment in the next what thirty days try as much as possible to honor such agreement pay them the as of what as of when due so these are the ethical concern of the manager as they diff, as they relate to different public what each of the stakeholders are interested in the employee the labor union you know, trade association dealers customer and what and supplier as well competitors as well a fear competition is also what a fair competition is also very very good if fair com we are not saying that you should not compete with your competitors compete with them but make it to be fair share with that there should not be any insider what insider trading faithful stewardship and try as much as possible to avoid what conflict of interest your creditor payment to what payment for supplier pay them as a what as i went due the government don't don't be organization that is trying to do what tax evasion so all is what render what that is and what you, uh, if you want to perform this what this particular onto the government it is from your book of what from your book of account so doing what render it what a good book of account so that the government will be able to determine the appropriate what tax that you are expected to pay so don't what don't under disclose your revenue don't increase your expenses and all that don't do it society has large environmental concern have a concern for them harm himself the fame itself, 
try to train try as much as possible to what uh, to keep your book to the confidentiality your loyalty should be maximum and try try to be what to be obedient so these are what these are ethical concerns as they relate to different what different stakeholders that is what different stakeholders is expressing the employee the labor union the trade association the dealer the customer the suppliers and the rest like that so what are the, some of the ethical tools that what manager can what what are the ethical tools that manager can use what are the ethical tools that manager can what can use just to make sure that everybody's what everybody's working properly employee selection so if you want to watch manager have a variety of tools that they can use to reduce the level of what unethical behavior among employees what are the, some of the tools that you can use to reduce what unethical behavior among what employee so that everybody in your organization will be what it will be ethically what there will be ethically behavior among them they will not do anything like some of these things that we talk about uh, ethical code they will not evaluate any of this word they will not evaluate any of this code they will not be bribing what is what are some of the things that you can do just to make sure that your what your employee follow the word the code of ethics that you are what that you have provided for them Selection, when you are selecting them, try to um, particularly interview background, do some background check and what they should provide you, what a referral, a referral report are tools that can be used by manager to what to applicant with ethical what disposition and poor what moral value. In terms of when you are selecting them, when you are recruiting, then do some background check. Oh, where are you coming from? Oh, I'm coming from this also company. Whereas you can what, if possible, you can contact the what the organization that you what is the this particular employee is working for before and try as much as possible to ask them some question that oh this particular individual are you saying what is the ethical behavior and the rest statement of what code of ethics by business enterprise organization should also have a code of ethics just like we shown here so that everybody will know that oh so that if they you know if you have a rules and regulation in hand so if there's no one if you do not follow it now so that's when you can have what that's why there can be penalty but if there's no rules and regulation, if there's a penalty, that will be what that, that will can sound unfair to some people. So have the what have the code of what code of ethics. Leadership by senior managers. The what the uh, senior manager should also lead by what you also lead by example. Leadership by senior manager. The senior manager should lead by example. Your senior manager should also be someone that is what ethically what that is what ethically behaving what very well. Not or what unethical manager. Because if the manager is on what unethical, then the what the subordinate the subordinate under the manager can also say that well, because their leader is doing this, that's why they are also doing it as well. So the leader should also lead by what example. So leadership by senior manager is also very very important to reduce what unethical what behavior among employees. Reward and punishment reward them, and there should be a, what a punishment for someone that what that violates it to reward them and what there should be a punishment for what for valuation as well ethics training provides some what ethical training for them so that they will be able to know what is right and from what from what's wrong and you support them in resolving what ethical dynamo you support them in what support in what in resolving ethical dynamo try as much as possible to support them don't just leave them alone support them to resolve ethical what ethical dynamo okay so these are the what these are the various what these are the various uh tools that what manager can use to reduce the level of what unethical behavior among what employee employee selection statement of code of ethics by the business enterprise leadership by senior manager reward and punishment ethical training support in resolving what ethical dynamo and the last aspect that we are going to talk about so let me just what let me make a brief summary of what of this corporate governance then we are going to what when we enter in the next class, I'm going to what I'm going to make it what a brief recap of this. So, really, when we say corporate governance, corporate governance is the way by which company is being directed and what and controlled. Corporate governance is the way by which company is being directed and what and controlled. The way by we, we what the way whereby the way we direct organization and control. That's what we call what corporate governance. So what are the some of the concepts in corporate governance? We have fairness, openness, and transparency, independence honesty and what integrity responsibility and accountability reputation and what and sound what judgment okay so you just have your word just like it was a three words just like a three slide have you look at is what the meaning of what corporate governance and i say what 
corporate governance is the way by which the world organization is being directed and what and control. What's the difference between what was the difference between corporate governance and what I'm managing? Please have a look at them as well. Corporate governance provide answer to the following question: In what interest is the company governed? And the, uh, the company should be what? The company should be governed based on the what? Uh, the shareholders' interest. Who has the power to make decision for the company? The corporate governance will also give answer to it. For what aims or purpose are those power being used? In what manner are those power being used? Do you use it very well or there's abuse of power? Who else might inflame the governance of the company? Are the governors of the company held accountable for the way in which they use their what they use their power? How do we manage what? How do we manage drinks? So corporate governance is going to provide answer to some of these questions. In what interest is the company being governed? Who has the power to make decisions for the company? For what aims or purpose are those power used? In what manner are those power being used? Who might influence what the governance of the company? Are the governors of the company held accountable for a way in which they use their power? How are what? How are risks managed? How do we manage risks? What are the concepts in corporate governance? Fairness, we expect a good corporate governance to exhibit some of these what concepts. Fairness, openness and transparency, independence, honesty and integrity, responsibility and accountability. And before there can be what you can see, uh, accountability is coming what is coming after responsibility. Before you can be held accountable, there must be what uh, uh, responsibility that is being given to you. Reputation, organization should try as much as possible to have a good reputation with all stakeholders. Sound judgment. Make it what a good decision. Don't be what don't be uh, don't be biased. Don't be what be objective. Don't be what don't be subjective. Honest and what integrity, independence, openness and transparency, fairness. These are what these are concept of a good corporate governance. In a what in a good corporate governance, these are what we expected to be what to be present. Areas of what areas covered by corporate what area covered by corporate governance. What are the rules of the board of director? The composition and balance of the board of director, financial reporting, narrative reporting, and audit. Director remuneration, risk management, and internal control, shareholders' rights, and what corporate social responsibility and ethical behaviors of company. These are the seven what? These are the seven areas of what? Of corporate what? Of corporate governance. These are the seven areas of what? Corporate governance. Sometimes we call it what? Issues in what? Issues in corporate governance. Issues in what in corporate governance? What are the roles and responsibility of the board of directors? So the board of director now, their roles and responsibility must be clearly stated so that they will be able to head accountability for it. Composition and balance. Composition and balance has to do with what? How many what? When we say composition, is that how many uh, directors should we have? How many directors should we have? Composition has to do with number. Balance has to do with what of what uh, knowledge of what experience. Oh, we need someone that study chemical engineering. We need someone that study law, business administration. We need someone that have five years of experience. We need someone that have ten years of experience. So that is balance. Balance has to do in terms of what your knowledge has to do in terms of what your skills. Financial reporting, narrative reporting, and all this. So you can have financial reporting. That is the most popular one that we can quantify in what in monetary term. We can also have what narrative reporting as well. The one that, that is narrative reporting, maybe through the word of mouth. And so whatever it is narrative or financial, should be, they should be subject to what audit. Director remuneration is also another word. Is also another area of corporate governance. How should we pay them? Because we need to pay the what the director. The director are just like the agent that is running the company on behalf of the shareholder. So we need to pay them very well as well, so that to motivate them. Risk management and internal control is very very important as well. We need to risk management is about what is the process of what identifying is the process of what assessing is the process of managing what is the process of managing. Risk. We need to have a good internal control as well. What are shareholders' right? Corporate social responsibility and ethical behaviors of company that we just talked about. So those are the what these are the what. Uh, these are uh, corporate what these are corporate governance uh, section, and these are what these are what these the last aspect of what these the last aspect of what syllabus what syllabus section what syllabus section A, that's what we call what nature of what nature of business. And please, I want you to beg you very well. Majority of the time, question is usually very tested from this word, from this area. So please read it very well. If there's any question at any time, the group chat is there. Please let me know, and I'll be glad to, to respond to it. Try from what you can download the word. You can download 
the what the inside from the watch from at least to those in what in Nigeria you can download it from the watch from the icon what from the icon website as well. So once you just go to the what to the icon website under the what under the student what under the student area you are going to what you can you can download it from what from the Ghanaians what Institute of what accountant as well so and other what other chartered accountant within the world within the West Africa. So once you just go to the icon website you go to what or uh, click on what learning material and you select what actual what study what as well study text as well as study text then you come down a little bit and you, what you go to the what you go to the inside so you download what any what any of your choice september and what the march diet are all what are hot yet so have you what have you look at them practice what practice the short answer the mcq and some of the charts so this is the first section of what this is the first section of the syllabus. This is the first section of the syllabus that we are what that we are through with. So I'm going to send you the trend as well. So you know the area. Oh, in this particular diet, this is where the question was what was tested from. This is what this is the study what uh uh this is the study text, as you can see. This is what this is the study text for the word for the management. So we are true with the words, we are true with this and um, the first section of the syllabus, which is what we call what nature of what which is what we call nature of what of business. So have a look at the slide, read it very well, and by God will you are going to understand it by God. And I wish you all the best in what your examination. Every one of you is going to what is going to pass by God. So we are going to continue from the what from the next section of the syllabus in the what in the previous class as well. So please have you have the slide is available to you at any point in time. Please have it what read them. If there's any question you need my intervention, please let me know and I'll be glad to respond to you. So what Thank you very much and what thank you very much and what and uh, god bless you all as i was saying this is what this is study text so and you can see the syllabus is what you can see the syllabus is divided into what into section so we are true with what syllabus section a which is what we call what nature of business and it comprises of what chapter one and what chapter two Majority of what we talk about today is about chapter two, which is what business environment. I think in the previous class we talk about what introduction to what introduction to what business. Okay, so thank you very much and what and God bless you all and have what have a wonderful day ahead. So thank you and what and God bless you. So enjoy your day. If there's any question, please you can unmute yourself and I'll be glad to respond to it. So please unmute yourself and, and let me know if you truly what. We truly understand if you go back to it at any time if there's any area that you don't understand please let me know and i will go into explain so thank you very much and god bless you all bye for now <laughs>